So there are two different types of problems on this worksheet. So we'll do one of each kind, and then the rest will be up to you. So here we go. We're gonna start with our dilation. These involve, you're gonna do a dilation and then you're gonna do some other kind of transformation, a translation, rotation, or reflection. That's the idea that's happening. So our center of dilation is at one, two. Be careful with that. Our center is not at zero, zero. So similar ideas that we had talked about with that yesterday. So we're gonna put one, two, and then we're gonna do our dilation and all our distances that we count are going to be from that green point, from one, two. So we are going to start with point A. Point A was, uh, and in relation to this point, point A was one below. Right? Notice I'm not paying any attention to the coordinates, and I'm not doing anything with the coordinates. I'm just looking at the distances. And the distance here is one below. So we're gonna double that, since our scale factor is two. Instead of one below, now we're gonna go two below. Here's A prime. To get to point B, we are here at the green point. To get to point B, well, it was one, two, three, four above. So instead of being four above, we're gonna double that. Eight above. So we're gonna start at that green point and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight above. Here's B prime. Now point C is also four above this green point, but then it is left to right, left, and how much? One, two, three, four, five. So it was four above, now it's gonna be eight above. It was to the left five, now it's gonna be to the left 10. So to the left 10 will take us here for C prime. And finally, D prime, well, D was one below, and D was to the left, how much? One, two, three. Remember, those distances are what get doubled. I'm not touching the coordinates, I'm just looking at the distances. So the distance was one below and three to the left. So instead of one below, now we are two below. Instead of three to the left, now we are Double it, six to the left. So here is D prime. So there are my new points. Notice, that I have not written down coordinates yet, and notice that the coordinates I'm about to write down are separate from the distances that I was just saying. For A prime, we're just saying, what's the X coordinate, what's the Y coordinate? X coordinate is one, Y coordinate is zero. For B prime, X coordinate is one, Y coordinate is 10. and so on for all of those points. All right, that's our dilation. Now we're gonna take our dilation that we just did and it asks us to do a reflection. So I'm gonna take that 
uh, that blue shape that I just drew and reflect it. We're going to flip it to create a new shape. And this is the other reason why I wanted to go over this one because we are reflecting over the line y equals one. So this is a uh, some trickier reflection that we're going to do. This is a trickier thing that we're going to flip over. Y equals one. I think we eventually had this by the end of last week. But y equals 1, remember y equals goes through the y-axis. It cuts through the y-axis. Or you can think about it, y equals 1. I want a y-coordinate of 1. So I'm going to plot some points here with a y-coordinate of 1. This has a y-coordinate of 1. This has a y-coordinate of 1. So does this, so does this. Remember, I don't care about the x-coordinate. I don't care what the x-coordinate is as long as the y-coordinate is 1. This is a horizontal line. So that is the line that we are going to flip over. We're going to count our direction and our distance, just like we did with our dilation. But this time, instead of multiplying it by a number, we're going to take those directions and flip them. If it was above, now it's below. If it was below, now it's above. So to get a double prime, we had a prime. Let's get a double prime. It was above or below. A prime was below. So it's one, it was one below, so now it's gonna be one above. Here's A double prime. And it's our distance from this line that we're flipping over. So B prime was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine above. So instead of going nine above, that's gonna flip. Nine below. So we're going to go nine below, which is going to wind us up down here. Here's B double prime. Same thing for C double prime. It was nine above, so it's going to flip and go nine below as well. Here's C double prime. And finally, D prime was above or below. Below, how much? One. So now instead of being below one, it's going to be above one. And here's D double prime. So now we're going to write down those coordinates for where it went for A double prime. It went to one, two. Here's where B double prime went. Uh, again, notice I haven't been using coordinate rules. I've just been going to the graph and then going from there uh, to write down coordinates. Oh, sorry, correction. This is at not this is at negative nine ten. Yes. And then D double prime. Two. So questions on that problem before we go on? That's probably about as complicated a problem as I'm gonna be able to throw at you. Because it had a dilation it had a dilation that wasn't at zero, zero, so we had to keep track of our distances and keep track of that closely. And then we had a reflection, but the reflection wasn't over the x-axis or the y-axis, so we had to think about that. I think the only other thing I could have done to make it more complicated was give you a fraction as a scale factor. So that one's about as complicated as they come. So if you're comfortable with that one, then you should be feeling pretty good. So we'll do one more together here. 
and then you're off on your own. So, this is number five. This is number five. So this is D, this is E, and this is F. So it's asking you to describe the transformation. So there are going to be two different transformations happening to get to the blue triangle. That's the idea. There are going to be two different transformations happening. And the main thing that you can do here is that one of them is going to be a dilation. So uh, the way I would start these problems is by figuring out what the dilation is and how it's going to work. So dilation, and it'll be centered at zero, zero. So if we know it's a dilation and we know it's centered at zero, zero, the only thing to figure out is what the scale factor is. How much bigger or smaller are we making the shape? Is that an enlargement or reduction? That's a reduction, it's getting smaller. So we need to figure out by how much. We can do that two different ways. We can do that two different ways. First off, we can look at our coordinates and see how they're changing. 6 is becoming 2, 9 is becoming 3. And we can think about, okay, what number do I need to multiply by so that 6 becomes 2 and 9 becomes 3? So you can do it that way. Or we can think about distances because the distances should also change by that same scale factor. So for example, my distance from A to C if we count out our distance from A to C, we're starting here, and we would count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So our distance from A to C is 15. And then we can compare that to our distance from what it becomes, which is D to E. What is our distance from D to E? Well, it's one, two, three, four, five. I'm just counting my distance from one point to the other. So if my distance changed from 15 to five, or from, yeah, from 15 to five, then that means my scale factor has to be, remember we use K to abbreviate our scale factor, Well, it ended up at 5 from 15. And so I can take that fraction and reduce it. 5 over 15 becomes 1 third. And so that is my scale factor. And by the way, I know that's 1 third and not 3 over 1 because if it were three over one, it'd be an enlargement and make it bigger. We want it to be smaller. So I know my scale factor has to be less than one. So that's transformation number one. That brings the scale factor to a third. That's what makes the negative six become a negative two. That's what makes the nine become three. That's what makes the six become two. So if I just dilated it with a scale factor of one third, I would create that red triangle. So then transformation number two, the next thing I'm asking is how do I take that red triangle and make it into a blue tri that blue triangle? Is that a translation, rotation, or reflection? I'm taking that red triangle and I am flipping it. So that is going to be a reflection. But of course, we're not just going to say reflection. We're going to say reflection, what we're flipping things over. 
Well, we're flipping it over my x-axis. So that's what you should be writing down on these problems. Figure out what your scale factor is for your dilation, either with looking at the coordinates or looking at your distances. And then figure out what other transformation between a translation, rotation, and reflection is going on. Because there's going to be two transformations happening on those problems.